Hello, and welcome to the final recap of Season 7 of Rel 5B and 5C. The season is pretty much over now, but we're still going to go over the teams, just so you can, you know, see them. We're going to go over the games anyway. I said teams. We're going to go over some of the teams. But, you know, we'll get to that when we get to it. For now, Rel 5B. Week 13, first game. This is a buy game, this is a buy game, this is a buy game. Oh, hey, hello? Hello? Okay, great. I guess we are still thinking. I started like 30 seconds ago, so... <laughs> I was, uh, you know, at the bathroom. Yeah, that's reasonable. <laughs> okay, okay, so, uh, bring me up to speed, what are you doing? Uh, well, like I said, I started literally 30 seconds ago, so I'm just looking at the first 5B game, which in this case is Organized Crime versus Gabo Gabos. Let's have a look. Oh. Uh, yeah, like, the Goblins won one this nice. Uh, yeah, this was the Ripper Inducement team, which is pretty great. Uh, <laughs> I Last time I looked, I think they bought a second troll, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, but yeah, they beat Organized Crime, Spigasaurus's All Ogre No Noblar Ogre Team. So, uh, I guess we, I guess, uh, I guess we see who has proved to be a better stunty coach. Yep. The team that actually has stunty players. I do have to say, like, I liked the start of Organized Crime, but now that we are 13 matches in the season... They seem to have developed a few players, but not like extremely well. Like another Ogre team, we have no division. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, part of it, to be fair, I think it's hard to develop Ogres. Like, it's really hard to develop Ogres. It's pure dice to do so, yeah. right? But at the, same t at the same time, like, for a team with literally nothing but Ogres on it, you would expect the Ogres to be more developed than this. Uh, and that might be why he was struggling towards the end of the season. Because I agree, I think Spigasaurus' strongest part was, like, maybe not quite in the middle, but, like, just... Well, yeah, like, around the middle of the season is probably when his team was strongest. And that, and I think that's when he was doing the best. We also know which two teams are going to go to the playoffs in this division, by the way. Yep, we do. It's the Dwarf and the Lizardmen. No, it is not. Two. What? Uh... It is the elves and the lizardmen. There's a story behind that, uh, which we will, which I will go over when we're covering the teams. Okay. So, uh... Well, I mean, Pantheon passes does get a uh, bye week now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. Uh, so that puts them pretty much solidly in the third position. Yeah, but the thing is, one of their ties is actually a uh, win, it, because it was an admin win, and the admin put in the wrong thing. Oh uh, yeah, true. So, they they should be eight three one, and that becomes nine three one with their bye week, yeah, uh, which you. puts them ahead of the dwarves. Okay, so congratulations, T self, and. Mm -hmm. um... And Sakari. Sakari. Right, what I forget? The lizards. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, looking at Diesel's team. Uh, we still have four more games, or three more games to cover first, though. <laughs> well, let's. Don't do get ahead of yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the bye weeks this week, incidentally, were Pantheon Passers has a bye week, your lizard area has a bye week. Hey, both the playoff coaches, they had bye weeks. Uh, and high fivers. The first game I see is off top of Heroes versus Heroes of the Salt Coast, and Heroes of the Salt Coast have a lot of that. Uh, that they do. Um, I do not know what died, but yeah, I I don't know what this died. Be, though. They have loads of this be out of this one. Um, they got uh, looks like Hufflepuff Heroes actually, yeah. They got MVP on their plus strength skeleton, took block. Lots of armor bricks on both sides. 
especially relative to the number of blocks. Lots of injuries inflicted, mostly by the vampires. And yet, it's, it's a vampire who died. Um, I noticed that the Hufflepuff heroes don't have a kill inflicted. So whatever died on the vampires was either a foul or a self-inflicted. Um, I like the Hufflepuff heroes side now because they have a new player, which is a edgy of a blitz star. Oh yeah, that's that's fun. It's pretty much mm. like what you want with Gemini. So, without actually knowing what did die on this team, based on that, I think there's a good chance it was a vampire, since it died... Like, against Kepri, I'd say there's a 50-50 chance it died from a foul. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. There's a very, very big chance. So even though he doesn't have the player, I think it mm -hmm. might be that. I look forward to seeing the Hufflepuff Heroes next season, but I'm not sure... I feel like this Kepper team is definitely going to be returning next season. I'm not sure about this Vampire team. It has not had an easy time with its development. I mean, I know that uh, King of the Cosmos likes Vampires, but if he's going to go with this team or try another one, I don't know. It's finally started to come together, though, so... Oh, maybe he'll stick around with it. I look forward to seeing it, seeing what he does either way. Next up is Rottingham Rockers. Versus the Cowboy Dwarfs. This was a big game. The Dwarfs needed a win to get into playoffs, and they did not get it. They did not get a win, but they did burn two Chaos Warriors. Uh, okay, yeah, that's true. They certainly came away with a... having done some damage, just not not enough to, to uh, have made the playoff dream. Hey, I mean, it's like Dubrum and, um, and um, what's his uh, name? Krasut also won a very important playoff uh, qualification matches versus me. But I took like two star players away from him as a prize. Like, yep. hey, you can win, I'll just take your best player. That's, that's always the cost, right? Unless yep. you're playing dwarves. Then you're the one who does the taking away instead. <laughs> Next up, actually, speaking about dwarves, we also have Lich's Skull Crushes versus New Worship Chaos, and in this game we also have a death. Mm -hmm. One Chaos blocker with Mighty Blow died, so Lich is now down a Mighty Blow piece. He doesn't have a full roster of Mighty Blow anymore. That hurts a little, but I think there are worse things to lose. Like, I I would much rather lose a Mighty Blow guy than, say, a Claw guy. I keep my first observation and this effect that this team even though it's like average now like in a few seasons the Lich's Skull Crushes are going to be a really really annoying menace mm -hmm. to deal with I mean, because if you look at skills mm -hmm. how they are falling and so on they are going to be annoying I mean it's a pure murder team so even if it doesn't win uh, win games it will always stick around and be well, murder to everything it plays against. Like, it's it's a team that decides whether or not someone else gets to go to playoffs. Or at least that's how it's building itself. Yep. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there were 37 blocks to 40. Tons of injuries inflicted. Uh, again, the team that got killed was the one who did most of the actual... inflicted most of the injuries. But, uh, I mean, you worship Chaos, even though they have a Mystics game Zerka now, and a Mystics game Wolf, they do look good for the next uh, season. Yep, I expect both of these teams will be coming back. And now, we can look at the second place team, uh, which is uh, the Pantheon Passers. Okay, so again, congratulations to Cell. We will have a quick look at your team, which you will be taking in the playoffs. To be fair, if you go to play of some like 5B or 5C, it's actually more of a curse than a blessing. Because you are going to have to face all these like very big teams, mm -hmm. so... Uh, in this case, uh, T-Self will probably be playing against a high division rat coach from the Big O. Uh, and then if he makes it to the second round, there's a good chance he'll be playing against me. So we'll, we'll see how that works out for both of us. Either way, he has his like main piece is very leveled, it's very good, and like the linemen and the other pieces are just you know low. 
Mm -hmm. So he's probably going to have to do the inducements in the star players. Uh, yeah, that's probably what he'll have to do. He, he is pro elf, so for an elf team, he's pretty TV efficient. Uh, he has a lot of good development on his key players. He, he's taken a lot of injuries, but mostly he's managed to keep them away from his stars. Oh, yeah, eight three five seven, wrestle dodge. A G5 catcher, one is 50 away from leap. That is gross. I hope this gets murdered by a rat. <laughs> yeah, but we are going to have to face it. Yeah, uh. The other catch is going the same route, but it's nailed, so it's not going to have such a long period as this one. The Zin is going to be an issue now, that's for sure. Well, it doesn't have wrestle, so he might make it specialize for something else. Probably still going to take a leap, though. It's looking good for them. Yeah, it Let's is. Let's look at the other team. Sukari. Ooh, First nice. place. Yeah. Sukari, you're a lizard uh, Again. If Again. I, the, is it the block score? The first one died, but he has a new one. No, this is like his third... Um, this is like his third Crocs, isn't it? Stop rolling doubles in those boxes. They keep dying if you do so. Oh, you know, he's not in the competition anymore. Yeah, he's right now, I think, waiting for the blaze tickets. Yeah, just it means the search, en the search engine on the side doesn't want to f find him anymore. Either yeah. that or I spelled his name wrong. Could be either one. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll say what he has. He's like a block cigar. Nah, I got it. He has a block mighty blow, mm -hmm. tackle Saurus, a blotch Saurus. That's going to be a great tackle piece really soon. It's a uh, garden, probably. Stuff like that. A block Saurus. New guy, a block. String 5 Saurus. Very useful. And then two rookie Sauruses. Yeah, this is a really good looking lizard team. It is really TV efficient as well. Like, looking at this, the only thing on this team that I would want that isn't here, here is a agility for Skink. Yeah. I think the only thing that Tukari does not want to face right now with this team at this moment is like pure pure teams with like four mighty blow up. Mm -hmm. He should be fine. And I mean, like, there it definitely has more room to develop, but like, this is a really solid looking team. Uh, and I don't believe, I seriously don't believe he rolled block on another Croxagor. Well. On the other hand, with the luck he's had with, cro with Croxes, it's bound to roll a armor bust soon. <laughs> Let's hope because it got it for not, but you know, <laughs> it's going to happen probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, he does have the magic weather dome, so he does have a counter t to the bane of all lizard teams. Um, I don't know who he's playing in playoffs. I, on I only know the Pantheon Pastors because it's so close to my own spot. Uh, yeah, I, depending on the matchup, he, I could see him getting to the second or third round of playoffs with this team. It just, it really depends on who he's playing against. And like I said, if it's a pure kill team, then he's probably going to be in trouble. But I think yeah. this, with the advantage of inducements, I think this team can probably handle uh, a lot of other teams. Well, we'll see what the future brings to them. Mm -hmm. That we will. And on that note, that brings us... Uh, wow, we're going fast. That's fine, though. Fast is good. Um, <laughs> well, you have a match soon. I have a match in soon. 40 minutes. Uh, that brings us to Div 5C. This the... week we have the Grinchy Desserts winning versus Frozen Dead Mort, which is a... I keep forgetting... Necromantic team, the lost team. Yep, you and I both. Um, Glory wins, uh, I mean, loses first. Grungy Desserts versus Frozen Dead North. This was a bloody game. Two dead Nurgle and one dead Necro. No, I really wish I knew what died. Um, <laughs> Look at Grungy Desserts first, which was Stoticus, no Riddle team, which now owns three Riddles. Does he have all, his, all of his positionals? Uh, I think to... No, it's impossible. 
Yeah, I think two rotters died because the rotters mm -hmm. are the only vanilla pieces and all the other pieces still have SPP. Okay, because I, if I remember right, he had four Chaos Warriors and three Pestagors. Yeah, he's or Chaos Pestagor. Warriors, Nurgle Warriors. He has four Nurgle Warriors and four Pestagors. Okay, all so. With, all with mm -hmm. SPP. Okay, so two dead rotters, that's not that bad. Uh, he got nearly 60 blocks in this game as well against uh, Necro. I don't. As for the Necro, um, I think it's a dead flesh golem. I mean, yeah, golem tax. Golem that happens a lot. Again. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> You're officially RDL player. Pay the golem mm. tax. Yeah, his name also changed to Cameron after Wake the second, so you know, the second sword gives it away. Yeah, that's that's a golem tax, all right. Okay, next game is Corn's Glory versus Le Grand Bleu, which was won by, by the elves, like two to one. I'm surprised that Le Grand Bleu got out of this with so little damage. Um, 35 blocks, so he did a good job. He actually did more blocking than the Chaos Coach did. Yeah, but so... this, is this, like, this is like this murder uh call team with only mighty blow and claw yeah and he, and the elves made more blocks than the chaos did the chaos still managed to do three injuries and three ko's but uh i think this this looks to me like um like the grand blood just outplayed corn's glory yeah i mean this team is also just playing pure russian it's not like it's using veins to play it's just mighty blow, blow, mighty blow on everything mm-hmm uh, three successful passes, 50% ball possession on either side, actually. Um, lots of SPP. Yeah. Um, considering these teams, I think we'll see them both next season. Like, Chaos for sure. Because, um, again, this is a murder team. It needs to develop more. It needs also to develop uh, like And I think Le Grand Bleu, it, like, they've taken some hits, but they've done pretty well. And they haven't lost too many players, so I definitely look forward to seeing them next season as well. And now, also, next match, I'm going to let you, for the last time, try to pronounce the name. Kenta Karas uh, Cretaceans. There we go, you got it. After 13 weeks, <laughs> you finally got it. I mean, I'm not sure that's actually exactly how it's pronounced, but... Um, I think it's Kentakira's Cretations, but... Uh... Anyway. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this was a 2-1 win for the Lizards. Not too surprising. They've been doing pretty well this season. Uh, not a ton of armor breaks on either side. And... Well, there's no kills anyway. It's a lot of ball possession and like shoving people mm -hmm. around, I think. Like, you know, a up of contest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks. Mantles owns a lot of cards, and like, Claude doesn't really have much might blow yet, so. And uh, I think Doom Anvil doesn't really have enough guard yet to handle Blizzards, as is evidenced by the Lizards out blocking them by over 20 blocks. Yep. Like, in any game, as if you're playing Dwarves or Cast Dwarves, if there's any game where you have significantly less blocks than your opponent, then that is a good indicator that something has gone terribly wrong. Like, that applies to a lot of Bash teams, but it is especially true of the Dwarves. The next match actually has an interesting result, if you ask me. Uh, Prona Party versus Royal Rumble Boys, which was oh, actually a draw. Knowing that Prona Party is like the leader of the um, division right behind McMackie. I... I have to assume that this was just his inability to keep healthy players catching up to him. Like, the Royal Rumble Boys got 18 armor breaks in this game. Also, to be fair, you can't really pass against Nurgle, so that probably played an impact as well. But uh, yeah, I Nurgle had 55 believe. blocks, 6 KOs, 2 injuries. I do believe the Undertaker has something to do with it. Maybe then we have to say hello to my little friends, the Goblin team. Versus, can we do it? Yes, we can. And 
to little surprise, the Kepri Kemri win uh, one to zero. Lots of armor breaks and two expulsions. And say hello to my little friend. He has no expulsions. What um, okay, well, I know the reason he has no expulsions is because all of his secret weapon players got uh, murdered. They got they got injured, and Blood Bowl Two does not give you an expulsion for that, even though it should. Uh, so yeah, secret weapons got removed by Kemri Do It, and they got a ton of chaos against the goblins. Enough that they were happy to be fouling goblins. Yep. They brought the foul game to goblins for once. 51, the table. 51 successful blocks as well, which is a good number for Kemri, but and a bad number for goblins. You do not want to be blocked that much when you're playing stunty. Especially not versus a mighty blow Kemri team. Uh, especially not versus a mighty blow Kemri team. And uh, this, this can actually be uh, this is only 1-0. I think Kem uh, where you might think Kemper do it could have gotten more scoring. The th the catch with this is, uh, well, first of all, it is worth saying McMackey is a really good coach, playing a really good team, and Negative Pro is a new coach, playing goblins. Yep. So I think that sort of speaks for a lot of the experiences here. Like I don't think he's been doing that badly for his experience level. It's just he's been playing goblins. Um. But having said that, goblins can actually be a tricky matchup for Kemri because goblins can get more strength five players on the or higher on the pitch than Kepri can. This is true. They have a strength seven piece, a strength five, and strength five compared to five 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 five, and they can get fungus for only eighty k for another for another, for another uh, seventy, you know, strength mm -hmm. seven. And you can get Ripper for uh, 270 without the altar. Um, yeah, Ripper gets counted by the fact that Kemri also can get Ramtut. True, but you, if if Goblins can induce Ripper, then Kemri probably cannot induce Ramtut. <laughs> if Goblins... Um, Actually, if Kemri can induce Ramtut against Goblins, then something else has gone terribly wrong. I was about to say. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I. Yes, poison is a bye week. Uh, I do actually just want to finish up saying this. Like for negative pro, don't let your losses get your head here. You were playing a massively uphill battle this whole time. I think you've done really well. I look forward to seeing what. You... Maybe don't take goblins for your next season, or maybe do. I'd I'd love it, but maybe don't. It's up to you, but. Whatever you end up deciding, I look forward to seeing what you do next season. Now, um, Jazz Poison is a admin win. Yes, and that brings us to the last game, which is the Shrek All-Stars winning versus the Dwarfs. T not just winning, but winning 2-0. to zero. That's a big win. It is huge and amazing. And they did it without even getting that many removals. Shrek also is actually losing a lot of ogres, but like getting new, creative, powerful ogres in the set. Now, being the owner of a 5539 break tackle ogre and a watch mm -hmm. ogre, but lost their piling on piece. Yeah, like, uh, if you can. And speaking of that, I think if you compare Sp uh, Staticus's ogre team, wait, Spigasaurus's ogre team, uh, to Ravenpo's ogre team, it's like, Spigasaurus hat was better at developing his team early on, but Ravenpo has been a lot more consistent with it, and I think it just shows the amount of experience each coach hat each coach has playing this kind of team. I just want to say I love get bait, diving tackle lodge, yes please. Oh wow, that is a seventy k noblar. <laughs> that's something you've never seen before now have you <laughs> it's definitely not very it's definitely not usual <laughs> it is definitely very it's just weird but I agree I like it 
Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. And uh, on that note, uh, let's look at the two playoff coaches. Starting with the person in second place, pro in a party, Soul of Dragonfire. Soul of Dragonfire, congratulations to your uh, qualification. Now that you've ditched the doors, you actually qualify with a nice team of pro elves. Ha. Huh. You know, there's actually more elves here than I remember there being. <laughs> <laughs> you are just elf blind because of playing dwarf so much. No, like I, me. because I, he has taken so many injuries on this team. But I'm looking at this, and there's only one injured player now. What happened to all the injured players? Uh, he bought them back. I guess he must have. Like one of the things which does um, really is no smoke for me here is this. this is, they both got caught. They are both blotched up, and they both have diving tackle. Like, if these guys now can get, like, Fent or Stand Firm, these are, like, just pure annoyances. Yeah, those guys are really great. Um, probably you would take Sidestep instead of Stand Firm, since it's not a double. But, uh... Well, they already have Sidestep, you know? Oh, yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah, you don't even need Stand Firm. Just Sidestep is enough. Usually. Yeah, the thing is, like, with Fent... You make sure that the ball carrier does not follow you, but sometimes you don't want it to activate, so, you know, it's like, you gotta think about what you do with that. I mean, the thing with Fend in particular is, like, you, can, you don't need to activate it, but every time you don't activate it, it's complete schmuck bait for your opponent. Yeah. It's like, by you not using this tells me that I should not follow you. <laughs> The thing is, though, like... But sometimes people he, aren't paying attention. <laughs> he's having those two blitzes which are being built like that. Mm -hmm. Then his other two catches are also being built like that, but are just sort of further down to development, like they still need to recover from diving back, I guess. And uh, then he has two ball hawks. Uh, yep. Yeah, that he does. And uh, he doesn't really have a dedicated receiver. I guess he's playing elves, so he doesn't really need one, just... I mean, he has four catchers. Like, what else do you need? Agi four with catch? You're going to catch the ball more often than you don't. Nerves of steel. Eh. Does he really they, need that? They don't deal have nerves of steel. Oh, they do! Yeah, like, they're already perfect catchers. He doesn't need anything else. You don't really play pro else, now, do you? Obviously, I don't. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why those catches are so amazing. They're only 100k and they come like with catch and nerves of steel. Which wow, means like... That, like, everywhere where they stand, they will catch in a 2+. Why Why would you ever play high elves when you could play this team? <laughs> That's also something I wonder. I think the only reason is for the armor 8. Um, the throwers on high elves are better, actually. But I think that's about it. Like, otherwise, this is just a more cost-efficient uh, high elf team with better... Uh, starting skills. Yep. Oi. Okay, well, I don't know who you're playing against, but I honestly... I expect Soul of Dragonfire to... Unless he has a terrible matchup, to make it past the first round of playoffs. I don't know how far he'll make it, because he does sort of have a reputation for self-destructing spectacularly. Uh, but I expect him to do pretty well in playoffs, at least by, for a uh, one-season team. Our next contender, congratulations, McMackie, on the awesome record of 11 wins and 2. I think it's draws and losses. Draws? McMackie has not lost yet in Steam, will they help? Uh, yeah, this might be the, this might be the, uh, win record for the season, 11, 2, and 0. I haven't actually checked that to be sure, but it's definitely up there. Yeah. Gold game standards. Mm -hmm. Because like no one ever d ever gets a perfect thirteen games, but 11, 11 to zero is pretty damn close. <laughs> um. One of the good things I see about this team is the fact that he has full team, so he's a big bench. He needs the extra bench mm -hmm. because you know eighty seven. Even though while the two guardians are like eighty nine and your blitz are eighty eight, the rest of your team is eighty seven. Yeah. So it's good having a big bench. He has two followers, which is also good. He has a very good receiver. 
And he has the kill potential which he needs, which is full mighty blow, one combat, used to be two, but he had a mm -hmm. fight, and now he has a block to the Guardian. Two guard guys as well, just for when you need to make a block of something that's not a Tomb Guardian. Uh, a pretty good throw raw, and the team as a whole is incredibly TV efficient. It's, 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 it, it's, it's a 14 really player team with under 1600 TV. It's a really, really good base to actually develop your team on. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, as a company, it's a good base, and you want to just keep on going with it. Yeah, I think I think looking at this team, like the only thing you really want at this point is just maybe a second throw raw, but mostly you, you just want to develop your Tomb Guardians without them accumulating too many injuries. Yep, that's something that my team specializes in. Mm -hmm. like and, two, two uh... Which are level 5 each. And uh, I don't know what he's playing, who he's playing against in the first round, but I do know he is in the quarter bracket. Uh, this team is in the quarter bracket with the uh, with the uh, college league, not college, the minors winner. Yep. And I don't know how helpful that is for people watching, but you know. There you go. Um. It's going to be a nice start mm -hmm. to his uh, playoff season. I mean, the chance that he is actually going to win it all the way is going to be still small because there are like a lot of like juggernaut teams out there. But you know, having a nice start is always nice, and there is some sort of like mini prize if you can get to the final eight because Ringsot will then make a little move here at the end. And uh, I do expect McMackey to do really well in these playoffs, actually. I think the only real weakness his team c could have is just a pure agility team. I think that will, will be the worst matchup for him. Uh, because he does he only has one tackle on this whole thing. So And Kepri aren't really that fast. So, I mean, he, was, he didn't lose against Soul of Dragonfire, so obviously he knows how to handle that. But at yep. the same time, say... A say a wood elf team where all everything has dodge, there might he just might not be able to catch them and stop them from scoring. And sure he'll murder a lot of their players, but they'll still score. Either way, I'm curious to see them in action in the uh, in the playoffs uh, for uh, contestants from five uh, B and five C. I'm curious uh, how well they will do. I actually am very curious to see if we will have another story like Sage. Uh, that would be terrific. And this time we can say that it was in Rel. So. No, well, for you guys it might be nice, but you know. <laughs> I'm slightly G and I'm slightly Rel, so I'm sort of biased here. Well, we don't have any good sport reporters, so I, I say being a sport reporter in Rel. So we need to find our wins where we can. <laughs> Uh, anyway. anyway, I wish you good luck on your match uh, tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This was the RDL 5B and 5C recap of this season. And what is going to happen with sports reports now, that's probably up to the admins. We might be covering another division, we might not be covering it at all. It depends on what we choose to do. It depends how, actually, it depends on how busy I am. Because uh, I, I was unemployed. Floyd from basically from the start of this season right up to the end and I mean to the end because I'm starting a new job right when the season ends oh, like literally next week yeah thanks but that also means that I had free time to do this during this season but I might not have it for next season we'll yeah, see uh, it, what do you do now um it's uh okay Give me 30 seconds. Uh, until, anyway, until next time, if there is a next time, probably there will be a next time for something. Uh, this has been the recap with Chaos Below. And Gengar and sometimes Nosedive. And good luck with your games. Good night. <laughs>